got Ole Miss Saturday night, SEC Network, 730 kick. Uh, thing that jumps out at you once you watch the tape is just overall team speed. They, they've got a lot of guys that run extremely well. Obviously, offensively, um, I think they're leading our league right now in most, about every category. But uh, uh, the skill position players are really good. Matt Corral's playing really good football, completing over 70% of his passes in a lot of vertical passing game. Uh, Plumley does a nice job when they bring him in and the different things that and how they use him. Uh, uh, Jerion Ely and, and uh, Connor, the two backs, are really good players. Uh, very difficult guys in space to take down. Um, Elijah Moore, we played against two years ago over there. Knew as a true freshman, he was going to be a fantastic player. But he's a very good slot receiver, punt returner. Speed sweep guy, they utilize him in a lot of different ways. Mingo and Drummond, both other guys outside that are good players. Uh, and Yebo, the transfer tight end, has been a, a, a huge addition to their team. So they're very uh, good in the skill positions. They play with a great tempo. Uh, you know, and uh, Lane does a great job of whether he or Levy or Colin plays. Both guys do a nice job of uh, attacking you with tempo. Uh, but also schematically in matchups, and they do they do a really good job. So uh, we got our work cut out for us. So aggressive on special teams, uh, can, they continue to improve on defense. So uh, work cut out for us on Saturday night. And I open up for any questions. And I also I'll say that uh, both quarterbacks, Colin and Ryan, both got equal reps. We have a package for Luke, uh, but with Colin and Ryan being so so similar skill set wise. Uh, both guys did a good job today. We do not have a timetable on when we will make that decision. It could be up to pregame warm up to see who's spending it best in pregame. So we'll we'll go from there. All right, we're going to mix it up a little bit and let Rick Henry take the first one today. All right, thank you, Steve. Hey, Will. Nick Mills told us that he would take a bullet for you. First of all, have you ever had a player say that about you before? And what does it mean to you that your players have your back to that degree? and are just very supportive. Well, I don't think they'd say I was an asshole. You know, we got a game on Saturday, right? But, uh, no, it, you know, it, we have a, a great group of young men in that locker room that, uh, uh, you know, I appreciate their support and I support them and we ride together and uh, we need to win a football game. That'll make everybody happy. Ben Brenner. Um in terms of uh, the quarterbacks, how have you seen them kind of respond and react to, to having that job opened up again? You, you mentioned kind of how they practice, but how have they sort of responded off field and, and, and I guess also on field with their energy and such? You know, Ben, I wouldn't say it any differently because both guys have been, you know, we try to try to create a competitive atmosphere all the time. And, uh, and I know Mike does a great job of pushing that position. And then having those guys be game ready uh, in all situations, you know, Luke is 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 always is really I wouldn't maybe for the last month, month and a half, maybe six weeks, has been getting the lion's share of, of reps of, at quarterback in his package and the things that we do, trying to bring that along, and we'll continue to do so. And Ryan and Colin have been getting the reps in what we're you know I guess you would say our mainstay offense and what we do. So, uh, but those, but it's been a very competitive uh, room on and off the field, in my opinion. And, uh, and both guys, I think, are great for each other. Uh, both guys interact very well together. Both guys share information very well together. Both guys want South Carolina to be successful and win. And they both want to be the starting quarterback. Only one guy can play. Uh, but both guys are talented, and we can win with both. David. Well, uh, you guys played Ole Miss two years ago, and back then they had a real, you know, high-flying offense, but they had a different coach with Matt Luke and now Lane. Have you ever seen that kind of similarity last over a coaching change in terms of how explosive the offense is? Well, you know, again, they, you know, Phil Longo was the offensive coordinator, and he did a great job and is doing a really good job at North Carolina. So, um, you know, I do think that but, but with the tempo they play with, um, you know, there's a little bit more in the run game that Lane presents. Uh, each week as far as what they do uh, and and you know but there's a lot of you know concepts that carry over especially with the tempo that they play with uh, and very similar skill set you know from a receiver standpoint and a running back you know we went over there and the tight end that we played that day still playing with Buffalo uh, I don't know where the quarterback is but he was talented Matt Corral played that day as a true freshman and you know got tremendous respect for him he's got arm talent he can make all the throws he's got athleticism he can hurt you with his legs um, the running back, 22, was a, was a really good football player for him. Elijah Moore was a freshman. Uh, A.J. Brown was a senior. 
uh, outside receiver that was a very difficult matchup. So there was a, it was, again, another really talented skill uh, position team. Eric Boynton. <clears throat> Eric? You know, when you hear uh, uh, booze at your home stadium and you obviously you know there's a lot of criticism out there right now, does it, does it help kind of create kind of an us-against-the-world mentality around the program, both in the locker room, at practice, that, that kind of thing, to change the, the tenor of your preparation at all? It really doesn't. At the end of the day, it's you know I always tell the guys we can control what we can control, and that's our preparation and pr preparation for Ole Miss, which, which has got a good football team. So we need to lock in and focus on those things and block out anything, whether it's um, – Negative or positive, you know. And in the day when we when you're winning the games and everybody wants to pat you on the back, and that's, you know, that can be a distraction as well. Joe Gorcha, coach, along those same lines, do you stress to the players that they can control the narrative of what happens next? There's four games left, so how you play can determine the narrative and what people talk about. And do you emphasize it's what you guys control that determines what people say about you moving forward? Well, we, you know, Joe, we say that from day one since I've been here. And, and that's that's been a message. Every week is a season. And uh, we've got four great opportunities and the next opportunity is in Oxford, Mississippi. And that's that's what we're focused on. Colin Taylor. Yeah, well, two questions for you. I guess as the week continues, will you change reps, whittle down reps if you kind of have an idea of who's going to start um, before Saturday? I don't think we want to make that decision until at least after uh, Friday's walkthrough. And I guess you've talked a bunch this year about the quarterback that's going to give you the best chance to win is going to play. I guess, how do you quantify that in practice? What do you go, what all goes into evaluating that? Well, decision-making at the line of scrimmage in the run game, decision-making at the line of scrimmage in protections, decision-making at the line of scrimmage of uh, redirecting the protection, changing the play, uh, whatever the game plan presents itself, uh, completion percentage, being accurate with the football, uh, we'll have a third down period tomorrow, which will be critical for the for both guys. Uh, we'll have a one minute period tomorrow or Thursday. We haven't decided yet. Uh, that'll be critical for them. How they manage all of the things I talked about earlier in scout periods, crossover periods, and good on good periods. So every play is graded. I mean, we do that, but that's not just now, Colin. That's been every day since we've been going and trying to create competition. And it's not just the quarterback position. We we chart product, production on defense. Uh, we grade, you know, every day has a grade of, of a, you know, uh, offensive line-wise, running back-wise, whatever the case may be. But those are the things that the quarterback position we're looking at. And, uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll continue to evaluate that and grade those guys. Kyle Thomas. Coach, after the Auburn game, we were 2-2. Two and two, And since then, we've had a two-game losing streak. What are you doing as a coach? And what is your staff doing to make sure that that doesn't turn into a three-game losing streak? Well, I mean, we're, we're preparing our football team like we would normally do and like we did against Vanderbilt and like we did against Auburn and, and obviously the other teams. And we got to play better and coach better on Saturday night. Mike Yuba. Well, I'm sure people from the outside, they look at it and it's easy to just look at Colin Hill and just be able to blame him. But when you look at the big picture, of course, it's, you know, the drops, there's some other things going on. Why, why now? Why look at the decision to, to make a change now? I try to look, think back to your first year when you decided to make a change at quarterback when Perry Orth. And, uh, so why now in terms of just what you've been seeing and, and maybe not a little bit earlier in the year? Well, I think that we'd been pretty productive earlier in the year. Uh, I, I didn't think we had, we, you know, we, we had more than 150 yards earlier in the year in a, in a ball game. And I think we lacked a spark uh, on Saturday to, to get things going. And sometimes the change up is at that position. Uh, that position can can affect more people uh, than, than any other position on the offensive side of the ball uh, with the way we're structured offensively. I agree with you. It's not all on that position. We, we need to play better around that position. We need to have more people step up at the wideout position outside of Shia Smith. We need to continue to take advantage of the tight end position. We need to run the ball better. And there's a lot of things. But we need a spark on offense. That you know, We, we averaged eight yards of play against LSU. We, we've done some really good things offensively in moving the ball. Uh, but uh, we needed a spark. And, and moving forward, competition hopefully provides that spark. Chandler Mack. Hey, Coach. Yeah, um, kind of touching on what we talked about in the last question. Um, you guys have been outscored 100 to 27 your past two games, and it seemed like you guys had a great flow to your games, even in the um, even in the Vanderbilt, well, the Vanderbilt game, and then the Auburn game. You guys had a great flow to the game. 
Um, and even in the games that you guys lost against Florida and Tennessee, can you just tell me about what are some of the things you feel the team needs to get back to in order to win? Is it just the quarterback play or is it run the ball more? Um, oh, it's, 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 it's in all three phases. You give up 14 points on the road in Baton Rouge when your defense isn't on the field. Your defense doesn't force a punt. It has a, struggles to stop the run, force them to, you know, we're not very good on first and 10. So that creates issues for you on third down defensively, uh, you know, so – you know, that, you know, in, you know, Saturday night, we get worn down defensively because we can't stay on the field nor get off the field on defense. So it's, it's a lot of different things uh, that we can improve on. And then we certainly are addressing with our team and we'll continue to address with our team. But it isn't just quarterback play. We got a lot more issues other than that in the last two ball games. Ben Brenner. Uh, Will, this week, have, have you had any uh, conversations with Coach Tanner about just kind of where things stand in, uh, in the state of the program? Coach Tanner and I talk all the time about where we are and what we need to do to be successful, and everything's been very positive. What kind of message did he have for you this week? He's been very supportive like he's been for the previous four years. John Whittle. Yeah, with, with regard to Paul Jackson, now that you have six games under your belt, how, how do you see your team differently this year under him, whether it's from a physicality standpoint, health standpoint, just – what, what has he brought that you've been able to see tangibly over, over these six games to now? Well, I think that as much as anything, John, the guys embracing the weight room, uh, you know, the mentality of when, we, when our guys lift, our non-travel guys and non guys that aren't playing a lot of snaps, maybe a guy's traveling, but he's not necessarily playing a lot of snaps. You know, those guys are getting three good lifts in at, at least during the week. And then the guys that are playing a lot are getting two good lifts in a week. And uh, the, the embrace that they have going in the weight room uh, from that standpoint, um, I don't even want to bring it up, but we've had less soft tissue issues, knock on wood, uh, than we've had uh, in the last two seasons, obviously. Uh, as far as those things are concerned, much that's been cut to a great degree. I think a lot of that's the monitoring of the catapult system, the interaction he and I have as far as you know, where, where he thinks guys are is where I think guys are. Sometimes as a football coach, you see it different than a strength coach sees it or a trainer sees it. So uh, we've had, you know, much, you know, very productive conversations, you know, as far as that's concerned that I think's helped us a lot. So I think Paul does a really good job, I think, from a standpoint of, uh, you know, just overall, uh, you know, uh, mentality of your football team and, and positively affecting guys does a really good job. And his staff as well. Dick Cox. After watching the film, what positive things could you take from Saturday night? And do you think this team, what did they actually learn from their experience Saturday night? I don't know that we could take much from the film offensively that was positive at all. I do think defensively we were firmer on some blocks. We played better inside than we had played. Uh, you know, I thought there were some, some positives there. Um, and I thought on special teams that we did a good job. Kai Kroger continues to come on for us. I mean, there's positive, Dick. I mean, I, you know, it's, it's not all negative, uh, but when you when the score ends up the way it ends up, it's not very good, and that's the bottom line, and it's got to get better. Mitch Brown. And I, I would say, Dick, I'd add to that, I mean, <laughs> we've kind of moved on. We have a 24-hour rule around here, and we, we, we rehashed all of that technically on Sunday, and we've moved on to Ole Miss. So a lot of it's not fresh in my mind moving forward other than the things that I know that we've got to get better. Coach, speaking of moving on, uh, in years past, you've talked about certain iterations of your team having the confidence and the resiliency uh, to be able to uh, bounce back from adversity. What gives you confidence that this team can do that? I think we have good leadership on the team, and we had a good meeting this morning with those guys about where we are, and I think we're in a good spot mentally, uh, you know, based on, you know, two very poor performances back-to-back, -back, uh, as good as it could be. As far as where these guys are, these guys are angry, they're upset, and they want to they play better. They wanna, I mean, we need to coach better. So it's, it's a two-way street, and we, we plan on doing both. Pete Acabelli. Well, I know you guys got the word from Texas a and about their COVID tests. Um, did Has that had any effect on this team? Have you had to keep some guys out because of quarantine issues or anything like that? You know, no, Pete. And, and when I saw that, I guess it was, it was yesterday it came out, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, I saw it and I called Clint Haggard immediately and he said, we're, 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 we have no issues. It's very similar to the Vanderbilt game um, as far as the uh, – However, they compute that 
Uh, you'd probably have to talk to Clint Haggard for exactly how that's done. All I know is they were not – no one's been quarantined. John Del Bianco. Yeah, well, do you feel you still have the right combination up front on the offensive line? Do you see any changes or are the best five still out there in your opinion? Well, Ja'Kai Moore's going to get some more opportunities, uh, you know, to, to play. And, uh, you know, Vershawn Lee continues to come on for us. Uh, you know, Jalen Nichols has been uh, continuing to improve, Vinny Murphy. So, again, we'll, we'll continue to, to work through, uh, giving some more guys some other opportunities, and we'll settle on some things as, as, as the latter part of the week settles in for what we'll do in Oxford. David Cloninger. Well, a couple for you. Uh, first, will uh, Sterling and Mullins be okay for this week? I believe so, yeah. And then uh, you've mentioned the, the other receivers outside of Shy needing to, you know, kind of step up a few times. What has been the biggest reason why no one really has uh, through six games? Well, I think we've given some guys opportunities, and whether it's drop passes or not run, you know, the route the precise way, uh, whether, you know, those, those things are all issues. You know, so we got to catch the ball. Number one, uh, number two. Uh, when you when your numbers call, us, make sure you're precise in what you're doing route wise, and, and and those sort of things are concerned because that obviously throws off timing for the quarterback in the in the play. Uh, so I think those things are all all encompassing, and those are the two main issues that we've got. Uh, and just be more dependable in what we're doing. Phil Cornblut. Yeah. Hey, Will. Uh, you went through a difficult finish during your time at Florida. Uh, what do you take from that that can help you here at South Carolina as you, you know, try to work your way through what you're going through? Win games. Chandler Mack. Hey, Coach. Yeah, just uh, kind of talking about uh, the receivers again. Um, Jalen had a big drop in the game. Jalen Brooks had a big drop in the game um, Saturday night. What has his mindset been um, over the past couple of days? Has he been more in engaged? And receivers as a whole, have they taken more, um, I guess, turns at the jug machine just to make sure that they're uh, precise and they're catching the way they need to? Well, they're always on the jugs machine. They certainly we've amped that up a little bit, but Jalen's going to be fine. Jalen's a good football player, and he's going to have that same opportunity on Saturday in Oxford, and he'll make the catch. Um, but he's a good player, and you know he didn't try and drop it, and just it just you know it, it happens. And uh, but he's an outstanding young man. Glad he's in our program, uh, and he'll have some opportunities on Saturday night. And he's going to make those plays. Mike Yuva. Well, a couple times this season when you guys have been down in the red zone, I know they've had some rub routes. I'm not trying to get you get you in trouble in terms of how you're going to answer this, but I know there's been some of those rub routes, those pick routes. In, in your mind, though, because I know you guys are usually in man coverage, what what is the benefit of playing man? And, you know, I'm, I'm sure that changes week to week and even sometimes play to play in the red zone. But what is the benefit, though, of playing man uh, that, you know, keeps creating these situations, unfortunately? Well, another thing, and I would – I go back to Dick's question is, you know, we had three opportunities in the first half to make stops in the red zone and make them kick field goals in all critical third down situations when you, we don't we don't convert. And you look at the Auburn game, you know, a game that you have success in, you, you made some stops in the red zone uh, to force them to field goals. And that was, you know, that was, that was critical in the first half there. But, um, you know, we do play zone down there as well. Uh, and we have been rubbed a little bit, and that's part of it. We've got to do a better job coaching our guys of anticipating most teams run those routes the same way game after game. They very rarely change things up as far as how they get to it. They may change that up, but how, how they run it and who runs it normally is not a huge difference. Uh, we should have been pressed outside on the first touchdown uh, in the game against x and m because that's where the rub was always coming from. We didn't. We pressed inside and we played off outside, and that's why we got picked. Um, so. Those things happen, and if they see it's a, a, a penalty, they're going to throw it. If they don't, then they won't. And that's just kind of we explained to our guys. If they throw a flag for holding, it's holding. If they don't, it's not holding. So that's the way we look at it. Colin Taylor. Yeah, well, you kind of touched on Ole Miss's um, vertical passing game, kind of an explosive offense. You guys have had some struggles defensively in the secondary. Is it just – how do you kind of game plan for that? And is it just coaching them better? Kind of how do you address that situation going into this week? <clears throat> well, I think as much as anything, the vertical balls, you got to, we got to keep guys cut off down the field, whether we're in a quarters concept or whether we're in a middle field man or zone concept or whatever the case may be. Uh, switch up coverages a little bit more to maybe give him a different look, 
you can affect the quarterback not only by rushing the passer, but uh, you know changing the look for him uh, for something he may expect and do something different, which we uh, do a lot. Uh, we need to do in this ball game as well. Um, so I think that those are all things that we can do to help ourselves and continue to mix man and zone and pattern match. Uh, but, but you know, continue to mix those things up because you know defensive football is like war. If you line up over and over again in the same spot, eventually, especially in the passing game, and they know the pitcher they're going to get, then you're going to probably get hurt. So we got to continue to mix things up and change the pitcher for him. That sometimes is difficult because of the tempo. Because you want to make sure you get your cleats in the dirt and line up and you cover down and you got your eyes in the right spot. And that's why a lot of the uh, deception things that they create, especially with good skill people, create issues for you. Dick Cox. Can you talk about the opportunity of going on the road this Saturday and, and maybe hopefully getting your team away from any distractions they've got right now and just being coaches and players? Uh, I'd love to be back in williams Bryce Stadium playing again. Uh, that's where we want to play. Uh, but the, on the schedule, we're going to Oxford, so that's where we're headed. Ben Brenner. Uh Well, with, with how things have gone of late, and I guess kind of the mood that seems to be settling outside the building, does does any part of you get worried about your own job security? No. Fair enough. Any other questions for Coach? See anything? All right. That Have is a wrap for day. today, then.